In this video, we're going to go through how you can add progress bars to your KPI cards in Power BI. We're going to go through the SVG code that drives this, how you can add thresholds to change your colors, and some of the other variations of shapes that you can use, like rectangles or circles. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So it's actually not the first time that I'm covering progress bars with your KPI card. It's actually something that I've already covered last year. And that solution primarily relied on using reference labels and icons. And while that solution still works, and if you want to use it, go check out that video. It does have its own limitations in that we are limited to using just the icons that is available from the Windows Emoji Board. Ever since then, I learned that the new card visual has another property that we can leverage, which is the image. Now image is meant to be used to add icons and add more context to your cards. You can upload your own image or add an image URL, which normally would just be an URL of where your image is. The key thing to note here is this FX icon, the conditional formatting icon, which means that you can use DAX to define what the image is showing. And fortunately for us, this supports SVGs. And SVGs are basically images drawn using code. And since we can write this code in DAX, it means that we can bind our data in it. This also means that we're not limited to using just the icons from the emoji board, but basically anything that we can draw using SVG, like a progress bar, for example. So this is an example of an implementation using the new card visual with the SVG image with it. So as you can see, we have the bar here and I bound this to my measure here, which has a value of 55%. If I change this to something like 80, for example, you'll see that the bar and how the SVG is drawn changes depending on what data I have. So these are the other variations that I've come up with that uses the same kind of SVG solution, but just draws something differently depending on what we want. And as you can see, it's quite flexible with what it can show and how it can show it. And previously, since we were relying on icons, we could only use similar things like this, where you have filled values based on the percentages. But what the icons couldn't do previously are half filled drawings, which the SVG can overcome. So if I change this to 85, for example, you'll see that the progress bars, or at least the other variations with the circles and the rectangles are half filled. And that's because the drawing of these individual icons are controlled in the SVG itself, not from the icons. If we open one of these measures, it looks a little bit daunting, but it's actually not that complicated. The main SVG that drives how the image is drawn is actually here at the bottom. The bits where we integrate our variables like the fill width and the text size are basically where we bind our own data. So for example, the text size of the text that is writing the percentage value on the bar next to the bar itself is controlled by our variable here, which if we change, will change the size of that text accordingly. I've set up some variables up here that you can customize fairly easily. To use this, you want to make sure that you update the variable here, the percentage variable to your own variable, which is in a percentage value. In my example here, it's tied to my own measure progress, which if we go to the progress is simply just this percentage value. So the row value is a decimal number, but it's actually a percentage value. Apart from that, you can customize various elements here. Like, as I said, the text size, you can customize the threshold. So when the bars actually change colors, so as you noticed, if it goes below 50%, the bar stays red. So if I just show that to use an example, we just change this to 0.4, the bar color and fill changes to that color. And if we go to 0.6, it changes to amber and anything above 80% is a green. You can control where those thresholds are by just updating these variables. You can use these variables here to control the color itself. So if you have your own right colors and you want to be more specific with the colors of your bar, you can adjust it here. And that's really it for the customization. Now I could add more ways for you to customize this, but I think this kind of covers the main essentials for kind of customizing a progress bar like this. At this point, you should be able to just copy and paste this DAX into your own reports. 
use your own percent value and put it in a card visual via the image URL. If you're using it in a card visual, just make sure that you have the position to the below text. I also typically remove the space between the image and the callout just to save a bit of space there. And also adjust the size of the image itself accordingly, depending on how big or how small my card is. So if you want to use these SVG DAX codes, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below so you can download it and use it in your projects straight away. However, for those of you that want to learn how to bind your own data into an SVG like this and use it in your own visuals. Let's go through the basics and let's go through a simple example so that you can see how you would do this. So let's start with the blank page here and let's bring in the new card visual and let's put in the progress here in our data. It doesn't really matter what one it is. Just make this a little bit smaller like this and let's go to the images. And then let's go to image. We'll change this to an image URL. And then under conditional formatting, we need to put the measure where, which will contain the SVG. Now I've created a, an example SVG here, which as you can see, is just the hard coded SVG without any bound data to it yet, but it already has a lot of the properties that we would need for the progress bar, for example. Now we're not going to go through this in deep detail, but you just need to understand which properties are the ones that we primarily use. So the key things here are this line basically defines how big the image is. So the, the bar area, this defines the length of the bar itself. So the background kind of gray bar below the fill bar, which is actually this fill bar. And it has some properties in it, like the, the color, so how the, what the color should be, um, which also is defined by our data later on. So at the moment it's tied to, I think this is the amber color, but we can change that depending on what the actual value is of our progress. And then the last bit here is the actual text itself. So the text that shows up on the right hand side of the bar. So it should show the percentage value. Um, and you know, as you can see here, we can control various things like the font size, which I showed you earlier, the text, uh, uh, the, the text color, uh, text family, and the actual text itself, which at the moment is hard coded. So it, you will see it will not be bound to the data as we change it, but this is where we would basically fill in the blanks by putting in our own data. So now that you have a general understanding of how the SVG uh, code structure looks like, let's go through putting this into this card visual. So you click the card here and under the image URL, we click conditional formatting and then we choose that SVG. There we go. So we just, just need to make sure we put this to below the text so that we can see it like this. As I mentioned, you can also reduce the size between the image and uh, the callout value just so that you have a bit more space. Um, or less space between these two. And let's open up the example SVG. And as we change this, you should see how the, the bar itself changes at the bottom. So the first and the most simplest thing that we can probably do is bind the text itself here to match whatever the progress value percentage that we have in our data. And to do that, we simply need to find the bit of the SVG where that value gets filled in. And we know that it's this part of the SVG which controls the text that's being shown here. So what we can do here is we can simply concatenate it using our own data. So we'll just delete that, put uh, double quotes and double ampersands. And in between the double ampersands, we're going to put progress, which is basically our measure. And as you can see, as we change our progress value here, that number also changes. Now, since the value of this measure itself is in a percentage value, but the raw value of it is in decimal, we want to make sure that it's showing in a percentage format. So we're going to wrap this within a format function. And the format just basically lets us define how, how it looks like, right? So we're going to put 0% here. 
And as you can see, now it matches with using the kind of percentage format like we expect. Lastly, I typically put customizable values like this in a variable so that we define all of these at the top of my DAX along with other properties that you can customize. So it's not so important here because the SVG itself is not too complicated, but if you have a complex or big image that you want to render, for example, it can be a bit difficult to find which part of the SVG that should fill into. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start by defining our variable here. We're going to call this percentage and we're going to put the progress here. And then we're going to do a return. And we're simply going to replace this with our percentage. And nothing changes, but the point is that uh, in the future, if you want to change the data bind from the progress measure to something else, all you have to do is change it from the top line here in the variable and the SVG should just accommodate for that. So that's basically the general gist of it. You use the SVG to draw the image that you want and then you use the variables to manipulate the SVG properties as you need. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to integrate progress bars in your KPI cards in Power BI. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I'm going to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.